Good afternoon, this is Mike Pounders and I had a lot of people ask me about how I paint and some different painting techniques and stuff that I do. Uh, so I thought I'd do a little short video to try to show you on this Bishop rough out that I did. Um, I've, I've sanded this and, and I painted it, the uh, face color and all this stuff and uh, the outfit. What I'm basically going to be showing you how I do is how I do the um, um, finishing coat with the washes of black paint as kind of a antiquing um, uh, thing that I do that really makes the colors pop and stuff. This is um, has has no linseed oil on it at all before or after painting. Um, I, I paint directly on the bare wood. Um, sometimes I will dampen the wood. Sometimes it'll be dry. And uh, once I finish. As it is right now, I've got, got all the colors for the uniform and the hair and the face and teeth and all that stuff in there. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to get it completely damp with water and I'm going to go in with washes of black and add um, highlights or, or shadows and depth to the whole carving. So the first thing I do is I'll take a spray bottle, just plain water, and I'm going to soak it down pretty good. And what this does when I, when I spray it with water, when I get it damp, it lets me see the grain and it also lets me see what the, the final finish will be when I, when I put polyurethane on it. This is actually what it's going to look like. And I've got just plain old black paint here and I'll put out a little bit of that. It doesn't take much at all because I don't want it to be real thick and black in most of the places. I'm just wanting um, shades of black. So I'll water it out and spread it out on this It's a glass plate that used to be a um, privacy screen for a computer. And I'll keep mixing water with it till I get it to where I want it. This good and good and wet here. I'll add water as I need to, but I'll take a real fine brush, a very small tip brush, and just get a little bit of this water here, and I'll just touch it to a corner and let that kind of the capillary action of the damp wood draw that in certain areas by the nose and outlining the face and that just really makes the details of the carving pop. If I get a little too dark in some place I'll just use plain water to uh, lighten it up some. And I'll just kind of let it go down in the different areas, like alongside the mouth and in the nose, and you can see it kind of making everything a little bit sharper and brighter now already. I'll go up under the edge of the hat. You know that's going to be a shadowy place up in there. So he's probably going to be a little dirtier looking than sun. There's a lot of a lot of opportunities around the face to do that. Now I'm going to switch to a slightly bigger brush. And 
and darken the hair up a little bit and that'll get into all the little corners and crevices of the hair but you can probably see a difference in the way the face is looking already um, we'll go around the neck where it goes down into his collar there let's get some little damper again the, keeping it damp also keeps the, the paint from soaking in so much we'll, we'll do a little bit along the the hat there to the helmet to add a little shadow right there on that and I'm wanting to do some on his teeth here to make his teeth really show out so I'll just see I've got it uh, it's nice and damp and I can just touch that brush to any place in there and it'll fill in all those little cracks between the teeth and stuff and I can go in and get the back of the mouth good and around the, the tongue a bit there got a little bit too much paint there on, on the tip of the tongue so I'll hit that with just some water to lighten that up a little bit the, you know it really shows up on the face a, a little bit maybe we'll darken his his mustache or his, his five o'clock shadow up a little bit more what we're seeing right now is what it's going to look like when when I put the polyurethane on it that's what the, the dampness of the wood does we'll lighten that up just a little bit some people will use um, blue um, for the five o'clock shadow like a midnight blue instead of black but it, the effect is kind of the same. So now I'm going to take the black and I'm going to go in the corners and crevices of the, the shirt around the, the buttons and stuff like that. Just kind of, I'm wanting it to sink in and any place that I want it darker, I'm going to, I'm going to paint that in darker. I like doing it like this instead of with um, finishing the whole carving and then putting an antique wax or or a, a mixture of linseed oil and burnt umber and stuff because you put it on there and if you don't get it off quick enough or if you didn't seal it good enough it'll just kind of darken the whole carving and usually in places you don't want it uh, usually for me that means the face or something like that it'll just it'll give him way too much of a suntan there and uh I came up with this method is I can I can control exactly where I'm putting those shadows and stuff and how dark they are and um, got a lot more control when I antique it in this fashion it's not uh, when everybody asks me about it this is this is what I do to antique it but you can kind of see now that it's really the, the black paint I guess you could use brown if you wanted to, a dark brown, but I don't think you're going to get the dramatic shadows and stuff. Um, um, definitely antiquing is would be brown, but I think when, when you're going for enhancing the shadows and stuff like that, it's going to be black. It's going to be some shade of black um, for something. And I, I think it really adds... A little bit of, bit of realism. Now I'm fixing to do some more on the hands and the, in between the fingers, so I'm going to wet it down again because I want to I want to blend these colors. I don't want it to sit on top. I don't want it to be just a big blob of black paint there. But I can touch this right in the middle of that finger, and it'll it'll run down there and see how that makes that finger show up a lot more. And I'll put shadows on the inside because that's that would naturally be a shadow in there, and maybe on the inside of his arm a little bit. And that's 
that is my secret to uh, antiquing stuff. Most soldiers or sailors or military, their hands are going to be a little dirty anyway because they work for a living. Um, especially if they've been out traipsing around the, the jungle or someplace. That's, I kind of see this as possibly a Vietnam War era, era soldier. It could be World War II or whatever, whatever flavor you like. And I just keep keep doing it till I get it to look exactly like I want it. I'm going over these boots a little bit here, especially the shoelaces. That'll really make them pop out. You can see all the time and effort I put in in carving those shoelaces in. That was a kind of a little delicate work there. But uh, the highlighting or the, the antiquing like this, this final wash coat just really seems to make the carving pop a little. Makes everything stand out and uh, really gives it quite a realistic look. And when I apply the, the polyurethane to the end, I'll dry this off, I'll blow dry it and, and truthfully, if, if I've got it soaked pretty good, I'm probably going to let it just sit out and dry on its own for maybe overnight and put the polyurethane on tomorrow. And um, that will look exactly like this. All, you know how acrylics look kind of chalky when, you, when they don't have a finish on them with the polyurethane. I, I brush it on very heavy and I only put on one coat. I let it soak in a little bit and then I blot the excess off with a white paper towel. And that gives a matte finish. It's not shiny a bit. And it protects the wood, protects the carving. Uh, when this carving gets dusty from sitting up on your shelf or something, you can take it in the kitchen and rinse it under a sink or underwater in the sink and it'll it'll clean right up. It won't hurt the carving a bit, won't hurt the finish a bit, and it'll it'll just be just like I just finished it. So that's uh, that's the whole secret to doing this is to go around and make sure you've got all the cracks and crevices just like you want them. front and back, top to bottom, and that's what it should look like when I add the guns and stuff back to it, and that's it. I hope this has been helpful for you. Thank you.